you're watching Estuary News. I'm Luke Adams. In the headlines tonight, a sharp rise in domestic abuse calls to police during the World Cup. A man murdered in Cleethorpes is named. The Tour de Yorkshire could be coming to Hull and a new women's centre in Hull is nearing completion. And I'll be talking to Nikki Silver about a charity abseil for lives. But first tonight, Humberside Police say they received nearly 2,000 calls related to domestic abuse during the World Cup. 90 calls were made on the 7th of July when England faced Sweden in the quarter-final. 67% more calls related to domestic abuse than the previous day. The force says high levels of alcohol and high emotions during and after matches can increase unnecessary abuse. A total of 1,822 calls were made to the force during the football season. A man who was murdered at a property in Cleethorpes has been named. Sean Lyle, also known as Sean Island, was found at a house on Sydney Street on Wednesday evening. Police say a scene guard will be in place for the next few days as they continue their investigation. Officers have been making house-to-house -house inquiries, but no arrests have yet been made. Hall City councillors are considering whether Hall could host the stage of next year's Tour de Yorkshire. They will decide whether it's worth spending taxpayers' money on the event. East Riding Council spent more than £100,000 when they hosted a stage four years ago. This year's peloton started in Beverley. Council officers will report in due course. Meanwhile, Hall City Council says businesses are showing an interest in taking over the House of Fraser store in Hull. The department store last month announced it plans to close its Hull site as part of a major rescue deal. Grimsby and Lincoln stores have also been earmarked for closure. The local authority says they are working with smaller shops in the store to find them new sites elsewhere in the city. And plans for a new market in Scunthorpe will be on display next week. Existing and potential new traders will be able to see a mock-up market and get information on how to become a stallholder. North Lincolnshire Council is investing £4 million into a new indoor market on the former BHS site. It will include bespoke retail units, a range of food stalls and improved opening times. The event is on the 27th of July from 10am at BHS on Jubilee street. Work on a new purpose-built women's centre in Hull is gathering pace. The Preston Road Women's Centre is moving to new premises as the service has outgrown its current building. Since the charity was launched in 2000, it has helped more than 4,000 vulnerable women and their families in Hull. Anne Clarkson is coordinator at the centre and is delighted with how the project is progressing. We did outgrow our old facilities, yes. Um, we deliver lots of services from there. Our training room can only accommodate 12 people at any given time and on one of our courses waiting list we've got 80 people waiting. So in the new building we can accommodate 24 people in the training room. So it'll mean we can deliver training services to more people. It gives us more one-to-one -one counselling rooms as well to be able to engage and support the women who come in and use our services every single day. The aim is that we'll be able to support more women from this centre. We'll also be able to listen to some of the things that they tell us about the services that they want and we've not been able to deliver at the other building because we haven't had the space or the capacity. Women have been involved in the um, design of it right from the very beginning of when we first engaged with an architect and talked to her about what we wanted. We had um, consultation days with our service users and even a couple of months ago we had a consultation day um, to find out what kind of colour schemes they wanted inside, what kind of flooring they wanted in various places. So yeah, people have been involved, local people and women from further afield in Hull that use our services have had the opportunities to be involved all the way through. I think it sends a, a, a good message that the Women's Centre is here to stay. Sometimes when you're a charity it's quite difficult, you're living from one grant to another. But some of the work that we've done over the last 10 years or so has really been focused on making the centre sustainable. And that's one of the things that our housing project does, because not only do we provide accommodation for families, the income that brings into the centre means that the jobs and the posts that we create are stable and sustainable. We use local tradesmen to do the repairs on the centre, as well as we've used a local company to build the centre. So the money that's coming in is staying in the community and the local economy. 
Lincolnshire police are appealing for information after two vintage vehicles were stolen near Skegness. A 1964 Porsche car and a 1976 Harley Davidson motorbike were taken from the garage at an address in Freeston on the 14th of July. The vehicles may have been loaded onto a lorry and transported along the A52. Anyone with information is asked to call Lincolnshire police on 101. People in Grimsby are being asked to have their say on the future of the town centre. The local authority is working with Humberside Police and Fresh New Place Shopping Centre to find out how Grimsby can be improved. The consultation will help local businesses understand how people view the town centre and antisocial behaviour. People can have their say online via North East Lincolnshire Council's website and selecting Grimsby Town Centre Consultation until the 14th of August. Creatives in the HU5 area of Hull are being asked to create a walk of art. The art initiative gives artists based in the Avenues area the chance to showcase their work in residents' homes, gardens and garages. Organiser Jackie Ward-Lomax explains more. We are organising our second walk of art in the Avenues and it's for local artists that live in HU5 to come and display their work and if they want to, to put them up for sale and uh, it's just to encourage local creativity. Um, we're just using the avenues area as the, the place. So there are going to be venues all around the avenues, like in open gardens, except there'll be works of art for sale without art gallery charges on. <laughs> this is our second one. And uh, yeah, we were toe dipping last time. It was a, a city of culture year and we thought we, we'd do something to celebrate. and. Uh, it, everyone says when's the next one so the next one is on the 9th of September so uh, we're at the stage now of calling for artists we've already had a good response but uh, last year we had 33 uh, we got 14 booked up already and the cutoff date is a month before which is on the, the 9th of August so uh, we're aiming to contact artists to uh, get their act together and come and join in. The search is on to find East Yorkshire's best young chef. The Copper Saucepan competition aims to discover the Apprentice Chef of the Year with a live cook-off in October as part of the Beverly Food Festival. The budding chef will be asked to devise a three-course menu sampling the best of local produce. Finalists will then go forward to a cook-off next month. Paul Vinson is the chair of the Hull and East Yorkshire Hospitality Association and he explains more about the competition. Well, it celebrates actually the talents of young chefs that are just starting out on their careers and we've we've had a lot of success lots of the leading restaurants actually in in Hull and East Yorkshire actually have people that have been finalists in the competition and also winners and runners-up uh, they get a fantastic prize which is a day at Winteringham Fields they get 350 pounds for the winner and 150 pounds for the runner-up it's a very quite a stiff competition so, and, but it's worth winning. It can work on two folds really because it allows students to enter the competition and we will guide them through. But from local industry, it's a chance for them to put forward their better chefs, maybe, might be the wrong word to use, but their more prolific chefs, if you like, to showcase their skills and abilities within their workplace, but put it on a, a local platform, again, with local judges, so they can showcase all of their skills and abilities. We have 20 members and um, most of the major hotels in Hull, Humber, um, South and North Bank and um, what we would like to do is to give them some experience of a competition which actually is, is quite strengthening character building. Also it's super to have something like this on your CV when you're looking for an applicant and when you're looking for a job later on. It's a fantastic industry. I've been involved in the industry for, well, I'm 28 this year, so, but I've been involved in the industry for 43 years. Uh, we are currently 11,000 chefs short in the industry. So it's a fantastic opportunity for people maybe to think, like you've just said there, not quite sure what to do. Can we give it a try? Can we give it a try? It's lots of opportunities. It's not just about cookery either. We're not just about chefs. But if you want to be a chef, specialise, be a pastry chef, be a sauce cook, be a fish cook. Lots and lots of opportunities. And the deadline for entries is the 5th of August. They can be made at heyha.co.uk. 
a historic railway cafe on the East Yorkshire coast is up for sale. The station buffet in Bridlington has been put on the market after its owner decided to retire. John Sadler has run the cafe for 12 years. The Grade 2 listed cafe was built in 1925, created when additional platforms were added to Bridlington Station to meet the demands of holidaymakers visiting the resort. Now, Hull's Jean Bishop has raised nearly £120,000 for charity over the last two decades. Dressed as a giant bee and becoming known as the Bee Lady, she's raised the funds for Age UK in Hull. Jean was awarded the British Empire Medal for her services to charity in December. We caught up with her earlier this week to find out if she's showing any signs of slowing down. I enjoy it, but I am tired. But I enjoy it. I just wish I was a bit younger, so... I could maybe plunge in a bit more and um, I enjoy it that much that um, it, it's, I'm too old now to um, really get on with it. I don't know what, how I could put it, but um, I enjoy it, and, um, but in an old way like now, yes. I wish I was younger and I could enjoy it a bit more. Join me after the break when Jack brings us a roundup of all the latest sports news and I'll be talking to Nikki Silver from the Charity Lives on their latest fundraising mission. Welcome back. You're watching S Street News. Still to come tonight, Jack brings us all the latest sports news and Nikki Silver will be telling me about raising funds for the Charity Lives. East Riding Council is developing a new strategy for older people. It will enable the local authority to ensure housing meets the needs of an increasing ageing population. A drop-in session will be held on Tuesday at East Riding Leisure in Beverley from 4 o'clock. Another session is at Bridlington Spa on the 31st of July at 12.30pm. An obstacle course taster event takes place next week in East Yorkshire to make people aware about the risks of flooding. Equipment including monkey bars, a cargo net and hurdles will be at the event to promote the Hultimate Challenge. It will be a water-themed assault course around Hull City Centre in October. The event will also include information on flood schemes being delivered in the locality and residents will be able to sign up for the Environment Agency's Flood Warning Service. The event will be at East Riding Leisure Halton Price next Thursday from 1pm. Fundraisers are about to descend 98 feet from Lincoln Cathedral in aid of charity. Nikki Silver, CEO from That Charity Lives, joins me now to tell me more. Good evening, Nikki. Welcome to the programme. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you very much for coming in. You're welcome. First of all, it's Everyday Heroes Week. Tell me about that. It is Everyday Heroes Week. So, you know, Lives is a charity that's made up of ordinary people that do extraordinary things. And they go out to 999 medical emergencies in the community and literally save lives. So this is the week each year when we take some time out to recognise the amazing work that these ordinary people do um, and celebrate and share their stories. So that's what the week's all about. Who are some of your unsung heroes? Well, we've got 700 of them, but I thought you might like to hear about Catherine, who lives actually not too far from where we are now, in a village just outside um, Grimsby. She's a mother of four, she runs a guest house, she's a missionary, and because she's not busy enough, she responds for lives as well. And one of the things that she tells us is what she likes so much about it is she's helping people in her local village, in her community, and often she can get to them really quickly when they, when they most need help, and then stay with them after the ambulance has gone and provide some support to them family too and she's just one example of the 700 people we've got and she will do dozens of calls this year where she'll go out to help people in her community giving up her own time to do that she's exactly the kind of person that we're celebrating this week it's all 700 of them 700 of them it's amazing isn't it and and you know they give up their own time to train and to learn the skills and then and then actually to really make a difference and we know that in many cases they either save a life or they do something that means that that person will have a better chance of living a fuller life after they've recovered from their illness or injuries. And you know, that's amazing to me. That's why they are our heroes. They are everyday heroes, quite Absolutely. rightly said. This absurd, it sounds very daring. Well, do you know what? It's a bit too daring for me, Luke. Um, but it's a great way to... Um, 
highlight the work that we do um, and also to raise some money because it costs us about a million years a million pounds a year to keep people like Catherine on the road and um, and so we need to need to raise some money to do that um, so we have a group of intrepid people who next Saturday um, the 28th will be climbing the very large uh, spiral staircases to the top of the tower at Lincoln Cathedral and then when they get up there there's a hatch in okay. the roof and they'll be going through them and then abseiling down to the floor below amazing have you got many people signed up for this daredevil we've, exercise? We've got quite a number of people signed up, but we've got just a few more places. So if there is anybody watching tonight that wants to have a go, it's not too late to get involved. How do they get in touch, please, Nikki? Have a look at our website, lives.org.uk. Look for the Cathedral Abseil and all the information's on there. They'll be in touch with Charlie and our, and our head office will be happy to help them. Okay. And if people don't necessarily want to do the abseil, they can still donate to the course to obviously raise funds for the charity? That is always appreciated. Like I say, a million pounds is a lot of money that we have to raise, but it's really worthwhile for all the families that we that, that we help and the people that we help. And they can do that through our website as well. There are lots of different options for how people can either help out or, or give us money to continue uh, to allow us to continue with our work. Okay. You ran this event last year, which was obviously very successful. What was the reason for using Lincoln Cathedral as a base for this abseil? Well, do you know, it's an iconic building, isn't it? And, and um, it's one of those things, we've, we've done some other sort of, you know, adventurous type events, but we're thinking, what can we do that's really special? You know, that will be, that, that celebrates um, the great work that we do, that, that draws attention, sure. that raises our profile, and you know, what better way than coming through a, a really small hole at the top of a cathedral and going there. I think people will love the experience. There's so much you know, art and carvings and being up close with the stained glass up there and things, and then uh, having this opportunity to descend at their own pace, they're in okay. control, at their own pace, down to the floor. And like you say, great architecture at somewhere like Lincoln Fabulous. Cathedral. Fabulous. And then I'll be waiting at the bottom to congratulate them. Lovely. A steady and calm hand. <laughs> Did you raise lots of funds last year for this event, Nikki? Um, we raised a few thousand, um, which makes a really big difference. It costs us £1,000 to keep each of our responders on the road. Um, so if we could do the same this year, that would be fabulous. OK. So you have 700 volunteers mm -hmm. and a fantastic army. If people watching this are interested in, in the work of lives and they want to get involved with the charity, what should they do? So again, all the information is on our website. Get in touch with us. There are lots of opportunities for people to get involved. Some, some people may be interested in responding themselves, and that's great. But some people might say, you know what, that's not for me. Um, but I'd really like to get involved with fundraising or supporting some of the other work that we do out there. And we're equally pleased to hear from any of those people. Everybody's got a contribution to make, and we really appreciate it. OK. When was the charity set up? 1970 we were formed, 1972 we were registered as a charity for the first time, but in 1970 a group of doctors got together because there'd been an awful accident on the A1 where somebody had died and they said, you know what, if we could have got there and we'd known about that, we could have made a difference and perhaps Making that person would have survived. a fantastic difference. All the best with the absent, Nikki. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Now here's Jack with all the sports news. We'll start with cricket and an exclusive interview with Estuary TV. Cleethorpe star batsman Vusi Sabanda has been speaking about his international hopes. The 34-year-old joined the Meggies ahead of the 2017 season as a marquee signing alongside taking up a coaching role with the club. Sibanda has an impressive CV, having represented Zimbabwe in 127 one-day internationals and 14 test matches. However, he hasn't played for his country since the T20 game against India in June 2016. I caught up with him at Cleethorpe's Chichester Road ground and asked him if he still harbours ambitions for an international call-up. There's a new coach now, uh, who I, think, I believe is Indian. Um, from yeah, he's from India. Um, I haven't had any contact with him as yet, but I do speak to the guys that are playing cricket uh, back home. There hasn't been a lot of cricket back home though. Um, that's why you find so I many. Uh, there's been a number of players that have left the country playing cricket here or elsewhere, um, purely because there's not much um, game time. So. Yeah, I'm still still fit, strong, still going good. Um, but obviously, you know, it all depends on whether the selectors want me to play again or not. Um, and then we'll we'll try and cross the bridge when we get there. So it's it, we'll see what happens. 
Moving on to football now, and Scunthorpe United's pre-season preparations continued as they were held to a draw in their friendly with SCV Sierkirchen last night. The Iron Drew nil nil with their Austrian third division opponents in Obertran, which is in the northwest of Austria. The likes of recent recruit Olafella Olomolo and captain Rory Amacardo featured as Nick Dawes' side as Nick Dawes selected a strong start in eleven. The game allows several members of the squad to get some valuable minutes under their belt as United prepare for the start of the new League One season in just over two weeks' time. Staying with football and a youthful Grimsby Town 11 lost 3-2 to Cleethorpe's Town in the Lincolnshire County Cup last night. Cleethorpe's progress to the semi-finals of the competition thanks to goals from Brodie Robertson, Tom Davey and ex-Mariner Andy Taylor. Max Wright and Brandon Buckley were the two players on target for Michael Jolly's side as the club also gave another run out to trialist Reese Flanagan in midfield. Next up for Grimsby is a pre-season friendly away at National League North side York City on Saturday. Kick-off for that one is at 3 o'clock. And finally, in Rugby League, Hull FC have announced that tickets are selling well for the upcoming Hull Derby against Hull Kingston Rovers in Super League. More than 14,000 tickets have already been sold for next Friday's clash at the KCOM Stadium. Hull FC have had the upper hand in the two previous derbies this season. The Black and Whites won 30 points to 22 away at Rovers on Good Friday, before defeating their arch-rivals again 36-22 in the traditional Magic Weekend fixture in May. Former Rugby League referee Julia Lee, herself a KR fan, said there's always big anticipation and excitement ahead of the derby. The whole derby is uh, still, the crowds turn out for them, people love them, that rivalry comes back that used to be there. Um, and it, it's a great for the sport because there's actually not many uh, dar true derbies in rugby league. There are derbies, but true derbies where they're actually, you know, within the city you can palpably feel the dislike for each other and the, the actual desire that they've got to beat each other and it makes a difference to how people wake up in the morning to, to what their emotions are, whether they've won or lost. It's sure to be an exciting game as always. It never disappoints for drama, does it? That's all for today's sport. Back to Luke in the studio. Thanks very much, Jack, and thanks, Nikki, for being my guest today. As always, if you have a new story, then please visit our Facebook or Twitter pages. Details are on the screen as I speak. Email news at estuary.tv or firm the Grimsby number 01472 31553. Write to us at the usual address. We always look forward to hearing from you with any interesting news stories you may have. Until tomorrow, from all of us on the team, have a great Thursday evening. Good night.